Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Today, we have Jason, who is a lifetime member at MIC. Um, we're just keeping up the tradition of getting through all the members. Uh, like I mentioned in a previous episode, we're just it's cool for everyone to see how people in the community are and how they're growing and how they're experiencing MIC itself. So wanted to get Jason on, give his kind of feedback and, and hear a little bit about his journey. So Jason, thank you for coming on, my man. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Of course, of course, man. So let's kick into it. You know, how did you get into trading and then how did you end up finding MIC and all that? So I had a buddy during COVID. I had just uh, PCS'd um, to DC. And I reconnected with an old friend of mine. And obviously when COVID hit, everything shut down. And my buddy was like, hey, man, what are you doing during the day? I'm like, I'm not doing anything. He's like, well, I just made five grand trade in. I can't remember what ticker it was. I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, I just made five grand today. Um, and mind you, we're enlisted members. And we were enlisted members in the military. Um, he's now out as well. So five grand in one day is almost, you know, half a paycheck yeah, some, yeah. for yeah. a month. Plus. Um, so I was like, man, tell me about it. And then we started... Um, he, we started talking about it. Um, I found a couple of the, you know, the, how do you want to call them? Like the discord groups. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, you know, like with anything, when you talk about something around electronics or you look up something on your electronics, the ads start popping. <laughs> yeah. um, so Tim Sykes came across my, yeah. um, my, yep. uh, my OG. page. And I, uh, I started talking with those guys and the guy seemed, you know, it was it was a lot of money. I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm ready to commit that much. Then I bounced into the discords and I found that, you know, the education route is the way to go because like most other people, I was just listening to what the discord guy said and I was losing a lot of money. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Oh, and, shit. Uh, and I was training, like, I listened to him. Like, they're like, hey, if we make a call, just for uh, instance, hey, we make a call on Tesla. It's going to run up. Wait till it, you know, wait till it, you know, dips a little bit. That's when you get in. Don't get in right when I call. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll do it. And I did, and I lost. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I had a terrible, terrible losing streak. Um, then another guy started popping up on my ads. I don't even know the guy's name, but he was very aggressive in his ads on, like, YouTube and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it was 2 to 5% every trade. That's all we need. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, whoa, okay. So I looked into that, and it just didn't fit my style. And then I saw an ad with um, the uh, free webinar that Bao yep. and Alex does. And I watched that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, yep. This looks legit. So I reached out and um, I talked to uh, I talked to Tosh. And he was like, hey, man, yeah, this is what we're about. You know, look us up on YouTube. Um, check out all of our videos. So I started watching YouTube for a few days. Hmm. I was like, man, this is a lot of great content. <clears throat> and this is what I need because... I knew I was wrong, I guess you could say, by following the pumpers, but I wanted the education because I knew that I was about to retire. So I retired from the Air Force uh, this past January. So I knew that was imminent and I knew I didn't want to work for somebody else. So I was like, hey, you know, I can get into this. And Tosh was like, yeah, you don't need a lot of money to start. You just, you know, compound it, build and build. And so I was like, all right, I think I actually saw one of Tom's videos about how to grow a small account. And that's kind of what locked me in. So I joined up for an annual membership, um, started seeing all the videos. As soon as the, uh, literally the day the accelerator course came out, I watched it all from start to finish. Jesus. And it was, I loved it. And I think that night, I don't know, how, I want to say 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, I messaged Tosh on here. I'm like, hey man, what can I do to upgrade to a lifetime? And within like five minutes, he responded to me, which blew my mind. Because like I said, it was oh, it was close to midnight. Mm. And ever since then, you know, I did that. That's how I got kind of found in. Yeah. And I've just been trying to watch as many videos as I can. That's, That's awesome, awesome, man. That's awesome. How long ago was that? When did you become Lifetime? Ooh, let me see. I have it up. Let me see if my, my thing shows it. I want to say, cool. uh, I don't know if it shows it. It was right when the right around the time the accelerator the first uh, accelerator course came out. Ah, so, right so it's the, been a bit. So it's been a little bit. Yeah, 
That's yep. really cool, man. That's, that's really cool. So now has your trading like changed? Like are you long buys or short buys now? Uh, kind of where do you, where do you stand on that? So um, I'm, I'm primarily short biased. I've, I've watched actually a lot of your videos and a lot of Tom's videos um, to really help me, uh, <laughs> to help me get locked in. Um, so I normally trade like the low hanging fruit, um, cause I'm still trying to learn. So I wanted those higher percentage trades, mm. yep. um, while I'm still trying to get figured out every now and again, you know, I'll see the chat and, um, you know, Hey, wait for the top to be set, you know, uh, Hey, this is the backside. Then I might look at something and go with a smaller um, thing but actually the other day i sent it to harry mm. i can't remember what trade it was but i used his first uh his friend's concept on i think it was I oh, yeah yeah, yeah that Man, i haven't well. heard that in forever yeah and uh i saw it go up you know i think it went from what was it, like three to seven or whatever or three to six whatever it was mm. and i saw that the little friends hanging and i was like yeah. right, i'm gonna take a shot small size i was like let me just take a shot you know because um, it was I think it was either right by zombie time or right after. Yeah. And I like, think yeah. I messaged him. I chickened out, um, but it worked perfectly. Yeah. It ended up, That's funny. It ended up going to, I think like a dollar and a half higher than I got out. Yeah. yeah that that yeah. shit works when the, when the market sentiment changes and you have those runners and stuff, you know, it, that shit works. We just haven't had like a market like that for, and it feels yeah. like a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 100%. It's, it's, nice to get, it's nice to get back to it. So are you finding success on, like you said, you're mostly short, are you finding success in the low hanging fruits? Kind of where are you, what are you doing with that right now? Yeah. So I've been, I followed my plan. I would say probably, you know, the rules, I should say, I shouldn't say my plan, but the MIC rules, I follow those pretty consistent. I still have my hiccups that I'm working through, um, mm -hmm. but I've been consistent every day this year that I traded except for one. Oh, wow. Um, That's really great. Jesus, man. That's great. And, I was and I was stubborn. I know exactly why I, I went red that day. Mm -hmm. um, I sized in too early, sized in too fast, and then I, shell shot got me. I didn't put in mm -hmm. a hard stop, and it just went flew right up. And by the time I could hit the button, it was done. Yep, so, it's usually how it happens. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't a huge loss. Like in the past, following the pumpers, I would lose a substantial amount of money each trade. Mm -hmm. This one was manageable. I think it was. I think it ended up being about roughly two, maybe three days of That's green. not that bad. Yeah. So do you, bad, than some of the I've had in do, the you, do you think that your discipline from like kind of like maybe like the military background had like kind of helped in your trading? Um, Good question. Because like it I, I know like Vic mentioned it and uh, a lot of people kind of have mentioned that that have like served – so I was just wondering, like, how, like, if that helped at all? A little bit. Um, it, it's more my mindset of I'm not, it, for me, it's not, it's not as much the discipline, it's the mindset of I'm not going to allow myself to fail. Because hmm. um, the jobs I did in the Air Force, if I failed, somebody got hurt or worse. So the mindset of I'm not going to allow myself to fail is, is more of it, like the military training mindset. Mm -hmm. But the discipline, I mean, I don't know, because – I don't feel like I, I'm probably – I'm more disciplined now than I was, but I don't feel like I'm at that level yet where you know, I still make a lot of mistakes. I get in too early. Um, I find myself chasing too much, you know. This, mm. So, but, yeah, I mean, my discipline has saved me, but for me it's more of the, the mindset that the military gives you, like the no-failure mindset, um, especially like right now. I like that a lot. I like, I like that. that how, long, how many years did you say you've been at this? Trading? Yeah. Um, so like I said, I want to say it was around April or June of 2020. Wow. So it's not even that long, man. That's pretty good. I mean, if you, if you're already finding like that kind of consistency and like you have that level of discipline, like that's for a lot of guys like that, that takes years. So that is, so kudos to you. That is awesome. And it, and it sounds like you kind of at least understand like the responsibility of trading. Cause like you've had some serious responsibility in your life. So I find that really cool. And I guess like at where you're at now, you know, what is causing you the, the struggles? What's, what's stopping you from kind of getting to that next level uh, in your trading? Do you, have you pinpointed that? Do you know things that are, that are giving you trouble or, or how, what do you feel about yeah, that? So, so the, the initial issues that I'm having or the, the current issues that I'm having right now are I, I kind of get in, 
I think a little too early. I don't trust my lines enough. Like for talking purposes, we'll say a stock, like you have lines at 520, 540, 560, stop at 570. Yeah. It'll get up to like yep. 510 and then we'll start to creep down. I'm like, oh, I got to throw some, I got to throw something in. Not a lot of size, like a starter size, but yep. still, you know, then that brings my average, you know, down. You know, by the time it hits that, you know, 560 line that we were anticipating, I have small amount of bullets. So my average is, is yeah. not where it could, it should be. And my tabs, I mean, they, we talk all the time. I'm like, Hey, I'm looking at this line, this line, and this line. And then sometimes I don't wait for my lines, um, mm. which is gets me. And then the other big issue yep. I have is just um, trusting, like letting it stay yep. green. Cause I have, uh, I guess you could, for lack of better words, PTSD of letting green trade go red and it goes yep. red real fast, real yeah, hard. Yep. Hmm. Yep. So I scalp. I mostly just once I hit that ten cent range, I put my stop, and I'm just like, "Hey, I'm out. I'm out." Yeah, we like yep. we uh, we had someone else on this morning, and uh, I guess like kind of like the difficulty that he was facing was that um, basically he wasn't kind of patient enough for his lines, and I was kind of giving up some pointers on saying like, if we have a stock. Um, for example, let's just use kind of low-hanging fruit as an example. The, the times that I've seen low-hanging fruit fail the most would be like if we have a stock that opens super under VWAP, it's usually like just over VWAP where we get that fail. It's usually like the line that's like right after VWAP where we see it fail. And if we open up kind of at VWAP, it's like a line where we're a bit like distance from VWAP. So we have like some room to kind of come down, you know? Um, that was like a problem because he's like, you know, I, I just find myself getting in too early every time. But I, I told him, I was like, you know, you have to kind of, uh, I guess, like paint everything together. You know what I mean? Like you really have to try and like paint a picture. Right. And the problem is, is that a lot of people are just shorting random lines on low hanging fruit and they don't really know what they're doing, you know. But if you have a, a situation where we do open up super underneath you at and then as we're kind of coming up, we get a little bit overview up and we get all those long traders that are just buying and chasing and chasing and chasing because they're like, oh, it's a view app reclaim. This thing has got to go to the moon, right? But usually that's kind of a, a long trap, like from my uh, perspective and like from my trading experience, I've always noticed those things to be kind of long traps, right? So number one, you have longs chasing. So if that fails, you know, you can rely on all the longs that are bagged for supply, you know? And then maybe we have like a whole or half dollar number up there. There's another thing that you can kind of add to the list, right? Plus this thing is already overextended from the run. Plus you have uh, the bag holders from the day before. So you have like five, six things to really piece your trade idea together rather than just saying, oh, well, I like this line because I think it's going to be a good line, you know? But if you can piece all those kind of things together and thread the needle kind of through the cloth that can really kind of help you a lot, you know, especially on the broken stocks. Like he was like, Oh, like I was shorting in too early and I would get squeezed out and then it would end up kind of going lower. Like nine, nine times out of 10, everyone's right on the low hanging fruit. It's all about the timing and it's all about the areas, right. Where you want to start looking to go short, you know? So if you can just sit there and wait and say, okay, this area is a line where I have like multiple things that line up you're going to have, you know, a higher win rate and a higher percentage rather than just saying, oh, well, the stock popped a little bit. We're below VWAP. We're below a lot of stuff. But, oh, well, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to short this pop or whatever. And some of them do just die right off the open, you know. I mean, there's nothing that you can really do about that because the one time that you do chase, you are probably going to get squeezed out. We see that in weekend I drink all the time. So, I mean yeah. – that's just kind of from my point of view, James. I don't know if you want to chime in. Yeah, I, I always find like for the low hanging fruit, the problem is kind of like what you said, Harry, is just that that people try to get in early. They, it's like they look at a low hanging fruit chart as a day one chart and that the stock is like broken and like under VWAP. And then like, do you know how many like charts in the chart re recaps and fills? Like I see someone losing on a low hanging fruit, which shouldn't happen that often in my opinion, because if you, they're, just two separate charts like a day one stock that's broken under vwap sure you can hit those pops under vwap or pops to vwap if you want to scalp it or something like that but like on the low-hanging fruit like you said most of the time people are just getting in way too early and the way i like to approach the low-hanging fruit i don't play them often anymore but what i what i found success on those or what i did well at least was 
I just started avoiding the first line, no matter what, like I stopped shorting like VWAP on a low hanging fruit or even like the first line above it, if it was close. Cause I just always felt like the low hanging fruits that I lost on were the ones where I was getting in around VWAP or anywhere near that area. I don't know if it was just previous shorts covering uh, or, you know, like Harry said, longs thinking it's a VWAP reclaim, whatever. So I just started kind of erasing my first line and that actually helped a ton because more often than not, again, a stock is going to mag, it's going to like go to your line. That's where you want it to be. And I kind of just had this, this mental discipline of like, it's either going to hit my perfect line on a low hanging fruit. And like Harry said, you can use, there's so many factors. You're like, Oh, this is where longs are stuck. This was a previous support. Now it's going to be a resistance. You know, you can line up factors. This is where yesterday's VWAP was, whatever you want to do. And like, it's either it hits that line or nothing. I just cancel my fantasy orders. You know, fantasy orders on low hanging fruit, especially if that's kind of the strategy you want to trade. I definitely recommend kind of like almost only using them because a lot of times yeah. low hanging fruits don't give you the opportunity to like actually size in because it's not really an A plus setup for most. It's it's unless it's like an, there's an A plus low hanging fruit, which is like a major mover day one. With like you know, I would say like right in this market. 30 to 50 million plus volume traded and it broke down. So like you have a ton of volume that might be an A plus low hanging fruit, but if it's just the day after like a normal setup, then, you know, there's really not that much opportunity to use size. So to me, it's like you set your fantasy orders, you set your stops, and then you have your areas to get out because they're set on the chart already with your, you know, support resistance. And then you kind of just, it's like hands off because the, where people tend to lose on these stocks is when they try to take the driver's seat too much. They try to be like, oh, it's bouncing. It's not going to hit my line. It's not going to hit my line. I'm going to get in a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit more. And by the time it actually does what you thought it would, it blows your ass out of the water. And you're like, how did I just lose on this thing? Like I had the right plan, you know? So that, that those things kind of helped me out a ton, especially when I was, uh, you know, more new, I would say. Yeah. Is there anything else that you think like may, might be like preventing you or like any other issues that you think that you have? Cause like, you know, while you have us here, like it's awesome to just kind of go over and kind of talk about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so my, like the biggest thing is just getting in early. Um, and then the hard stops, I got to be more disciplined at, at putting those in. Yeah. Um, Cause with, uh, with that, I, I have a, like, when primarily like when we're when I'm green like when I'm winning I find myself yep. for talking purposes I'll find myself we'll say I got in at 750 it's now down to 720 so 30 cent yep. swing I put my stop in at like 730 so I still can get a piece and I feel like I don't I'm not for some reason I'm not figuring out how to I'm missing on how to kind of give myself enough wiggle room mm. to where if it yep. gives a little bit I don't because I consistently find myself getting you know, stopped out. I mean, so yeah. I take it because it's green, but it seems like it's like every stop I have is that magnet. It hits that or maybe a penny above and then goes down another, you know, 30 cents or 40 maybe, cents. Maybe, uh, well, uh, James can either go or I can if you want. Go ahead, Eric. I'll go after you. I think in terms of like for me, when I'm in something like that, uh, I'm always going to be saying to myself, like you have to be thinking, and, and this, is, this is what I kind of say, that first bounce back for me. So let's say, let's say also for talking purposes, I'm short from 750, right? And the stock's now down at 730, right? Chances are that move is all you're going to get from that trade. So your trade has now given you that, that amount of money, right? So you've, you've made that, that, that amount of money and now that bounce back is really going to depend whether you're going to make more or whether your kind of, I guess, like what you've made has, is, is like going to come back on you. Right. So for me, that bounce back is going to be the most crucial part. Right. Am I going to want to maybe add a bit more size because I see that we're really struggling to bounce back or, um, you know, am I going to add a bit more or am I going to get stopped out if it's really strong? That bounce back determines really uh, maybe the next 30 minutes or so of the stock. So for me, if I'm if I'm going to uh, you know long a dip, like I, I want to give that a bit, like if my thesis is that this could maybe go down a dollar, I want to give that a lot more room than just setting my stop at like right, right below my entry, right? I want to 
uh, measure the stock up a little bit, right? I want to size this thing in. I want to start collecting a bit more information on what this thing is going to do. And now that I have skin in the game, I have, you know, <laughs> rather than just looking at something and like not really caring, like I actually care. I'm actually focused on the ticker. So for me, that bounce back means all the more of, you know, uh, I guess my plan on the stock, you know? So um, for me, I would always keep my stop at break even or a little bit higher still in that situation because, you know, we may hit 750, we may go back down a little bit and we may need 760 in order for this thing to really get crushed, right? But knowing that that bounce from 750 took it all the way down to that 730, 720 area means there's something going on at 750, means that I am right. But that bounce back is going to tell me how strong the stock still is. And I can still use that information to maybe add size higher, or maybe I'm going to uh, cover 730 and I'm going to try and short that pop again. Like there's a lot of things that you can do. But for me, when I'm exactly in the trade, I don't, I don't like to have a habit of like moving my stop down right away, just because like that tells me that, uh, I'm worried about the money aspect of it. Whereas in this situation, since the trade is so new and since you just put the trade on, you know, you still got to collect some information and learn a little bit about the stock and the way it's trading in order for me to really nail the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I kind of feel like, you know, especially as a short seller um, to grow your account, you do have to kind of master the idea or not master, but you have to get really a lot better at adding to a winner but still while realizing a respectable risk. So like something I used to struggle with was that like, I, I would just like have this like arbitrary stop number in my head, like not dollar, like I'd stop on the chart and it never really worked out that well because I'd add more size. And then if I did take a loss, it's kind of random. So like what I always kind of recommend now is like finding this consistency in your losses idea, um, which I've heard from other traders and I love it because, you know, now it's like, no matter what trade I'm in, I always have a kind of like a set, like, risk a number in my head that I'm going to lose if I'm wrong. And I base that on the chart. So like if high of day is, you know, 10 cents away from my, from my potential entry, I know where my stop is. I know how much I'm going to lose and I can size in accordingly to that. Now when the stock breaks down and it's like proving that it's working, I can't really add to that position or anything like that unless another level presents itself that that is important. Because high of day to me is like important. Like that's how Alex says it, right? High of day is like an ultimate stop out. So like my size is based off that. But once the stock proves itself and it like makes a lower high, that's now my level. So now it comes to this, like, is there enough range in the stock to add and move my stop down to that previous high? And I'm always going to keep that risk. Like I, to be honest, like I don't really ever have the mentality of like a break even stop just because again, I like to allow my trades the room and like, I'm always okay with what I'm going to lose. Cause I'm always in understanding of the dollar amount that I'm going to lose. I know what it is and it's tough. Like it, it is, it's a tough mentality. I just find like in small caps, especially, especially on the short side, having these tight break even stops or like this arbitrary, like five cent stop from your average or 10 cents from this line it doesn't really work because I mean, small caps are jumpy as hell. Like the amount of times where like I'd move my stop down, I get, I'd get stopped out for the trade to just work in my favor, like two seconds later. Yeah. So kind of learning that skill, especially like when you are shorting, I think is like from being able to adjust your risk to a level on the chart. Like I saw a couple of really good traders post on Twitter this week and actually, but they were explaining how they move their risk down. And it's like, it just makes so much sense, you know, and it's just, I think people get so scared that they're going to give back money or that a green trade might turn to a losing trade. And I think there's a difference between like, are you being a greedy fuck because the stock's down 60 cents and like you think you can go to a dollar, uh, you could make a dollar a share and then you let it like blow up on you and bounce back to your average. Or, you know, are you still in the right? Is your thesis still correct? Is everything still working out how you want it to? Because also taking off that trade too early and just scalping out is going to cut. It's doing a disservice to you. You're putting money on the line. You're risking it. You know, you need to make money to grow your account. You need to make money to compound your account and grow over time. So that's like a big, that's something I think you should really focus on is just kind of learning that aspect and, and being okay with it. 
and just putting in a hard stop right away, man, like always is the key for me. Like I just put a hard stop in now. It's like in the beginning, I used to like almost fight with myself in the head, in my head, like, Oh, you don't want to put that in because what if you stop out now? I don't care if I stop out. Like it doesn't, it shouldn't matter if you stop out. If anything, it's a good thing. You stop out when the trade is not working. But it has to be like a reflux to like put that hard stop in and then just kind of like it gives you time to reevaluate too. You can look at the chart and say, all right, hard stops in. I can kind of yeah. take my hands off and see, is this working? Can I move my wrist down? And and I think that that's kind of a big game changer for me, at least. It sounds like Harry kind of is along the same lines. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. like you want to collect, you want to collect information when you're in the trade, you know? And that's probably the number one thing is that I would rather uh be in a trade and get stopped out and like know all the information and know how the stock acts so like that way when uh maybe i get short again and something different happens i'm like okay well this is way different than what just happened here especially on low-hanging fruits like unless it's a low flow you have really good odds unless it's just a really really micro low flow where they just cut the supply and move the thing up a ton you know you have great odds so you can kind of take, uh, you can kind of use that extra kind of odds thing to say, okay, like, unless we're doing a ton of volume and it's grinding me out, or unless it's a low flow, you know, the timing is why it's so perfect, right? The timing is why those trades work well. So like you have all the more to gain, number one, by just, I think, just having a normal stop and also saying to yourself, like, these are also low hanging fruits. Right. You know, they're not it's not like you're trading a crazy jumpy day one. It's not like you're trading a new IPO that just came out. You know, they're low hanging fruits. So uh, you can add a little bit more, maybe size in a little bit more. And you don't have to be as you, you do have to be cautious, but you don't have to be as cautious as like any of those other like examples, I think. That's right. Really, yeah, I agree. Now, Jason, are you do you have plans to kind of expand from low hanging fruits? Uh, I'm just kind of curious. Do you ever like think about day ones or any of that stuff? Yeah, so I've dabbled in a couple of the day ones over the last week or so. Um, but so when I've been in those, it's been, um, I'll say like, not even, I don't even know if you would call it starter size, just because I'm trying to learn it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I get enough yeah. in, you know, for talking purposes, you know, I trade right around 500 shares, we'll say. So I'll get on on like a, I can't remember what, what it was the other day, pre-market, it ramped up, it crashed. And everybody in the chat was like, oh, I think it's done. You know, one of the pumpers was in it. And then I think it was Alex or I can't remember who it was, um, was like, hey, I, now I would adjust my line to here, here and here, um, you know, because it's on the backside. So I was like, oh, okay. I'm just trying to see the philosophies. I do, a, for those, I do watch a lot more. Um, cool. That's why the commentary in the in the room is is awesome, because I'll put we'll say a hundred shares just so you know yeah Feel something it. really small just so I can get in the game and see okay hey if they're saying this this and this kind of like Harry was talking about so I can understand mm -hmm. their thought processes and do the trade with them having no expectations of of winning or losing so if I win not a big deal if I lose not a big deal at all because you know it's what maybe ten twenty bucks that I'll lose if it doesn't go the way that, yeah. you know, somebody has explained it or whatever. And then I sit and I watch and it just, it amazes me. Like the one thing I'm really starting to try to focus in on talking about what the stops is. I love watching how, I can't remember who it was the other day. I don't know if it was Steven or somebody the other day, they, they stopped out, they got into a trade, it stopped out, it went up, came down, and then they reattacked at, at another level. And they were like, this is why we stopped. So then we're ready to reattack. Mm -hmm. when it, 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 and I'm like, man, that's, you know, that's such an awesome yep. stuff that I need to, I need to pick in. So yeah, I'm looking at day ones, uh, but it's more of just watching what you guys say in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's you know, cool. And go I, I like that. Now, what are you doing to get better yourself? How are you improving your, your trading, your strategy with, with the low hanging fruits? Are you doing anything kind of on the side? Do you have a tab group you work with? You know, what's, what are you doing actively outside of market hours to get better? Yeah, so I watch videos. Um, I attend Monday, Tuesday, and then I rewatch Thursdays, like on Fridays, because this is kind of yep. what I do. Um, nice. uh, my night times are full. I got four kids, so nighttime is Jesus. is kids. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
I watch as many videos as I can. I, I do have a tab group. Um, there was a couple of guys in the accountability uh, section of, of Slack that was like, hey, you know, I'm looking for, I was like, hey, so am I, because I took about eight months off last year um, yeah. due to some, some personal reasons where I, I just, I had to pull money out of my account yeah, to take care of some other things. And um, I was able to, to get the money back, re, reattack. So I've really focused in January 1, treating it like a job, yeah. you know, like in the military, um, for one of my jobs in the military, I worked finance. So I go to the basic, you know, the, the tech school for finance. I learned the base level finance. I go off to the next base. I start working customer service, taking care of people's money, their vouchers, you know, moving money around for people. But while I'm doing that, I'm still learning how to become more proficient. It's called upgrade training in the military. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm treating it just like I did with my military training. Uh, I've got that base level. Low hanging fruit is kind of like my from. And the reason I chose it, it looked like it was like kind of like that entry level. Hey, if you want to be profitable, you can use this low risk, low reward, but still you start to understand the game. And now it's take that next step. And my tabs, yep. we, uh, we send each other videos. One of us actually was it Thursday or Friday of last week was like, man, we, you know, I really want to get better at building my watch list and finding, you know, cause what he was talking about was how people kept posting, you know, like the watch lists and then, Hey, here's the gappers for the morning. He was like, I need to get better at that. So we went on to uh, the webpage, found a couple of videos. Hey, let's watch this, this, and this, and then let's talk about it. That's I love great. that. I love yeah. That's huge. I mean, I feel like you need those guys to kind of bounce off of and like, you know, like kind of like, I like what you said too. It's like, I've noticed once you start treating trading like a job, that's like a lot of the interviews I've listened to and the other podcast episodes I might hear from other people is like, that's usually when people are trying to turn the corner. When you can start treating this like a job rather than a gambling addiction, it's, mm -hmm. that's usually the tipping point for a lot of guys. And, you know, I mean, it is, it's like, you're, like you said, it's a military, you're a military guy. You could, you have to treat this like a regimented job yeah. that has like a success rate, like that, you know what you have to do to be successful at your job. The better you do your job, the better, the more efficient you are and the more money you're going to make. And it's the same thing in trading. It's like, oh, it's all very similar. And like, I, I think it's cool. I think you're on a really good path with that, with that discipline that you have and understanding how serious it is. And, you know, one thing I kind of wanted to ask, you know, maybe to even wrap it up, but, you know, you said you have four kids, right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's crazy. So now how is a dad, this is something that we don't ask often, but how is a father and as a parent, is it hard to kind of put the time into this and like study and do that? But like, you seem to make it work. So I just kind of want to have you touch on that a little bit, you know, pressure. Do you, does it, do you ever feel it? Do you feel like there's like almost like you have more will to be successful because, you know, you have kids, like. How does that that work? Is that something I don't deal with? Harry doesn't deal with. You know, yeah. we, we don't we don't ask many people these these things. Yeah, so I'm I'll start off with saying I'm I feel like I'm kind of an anomaly. Now that I'm retired from the Air Force, I get my retirement pension. So cool. you know, I can't remember was was it Bal in one of his tweets or something, and he was like, "Hey, you know, when you're starting out, you don't want to make this put pressure on yourself to where you have feel like you have to make money because if you feel like you have to make money." you won't, you'll, you'll break rules. You won't be as successful as possible. I can't remember. I thought it might've been Bell. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. Yeah, this, this sounds like a yeah. Um, so I, I, uh, I am lucky enough to have my, uh, my current wife. She, uh, she has a full-time job. So cool. we kind of live off of my retirement and her, her paycheck. Um, and she's able to get, uh, I have a, we have a uh, blended family. So two of the yep. boys go to school 30 minutes away from here, which is by where she works. So she takes them. One of the, one of our children rides the bus because her middle school is a little bit away. And I just take one kid to school at, um, for me, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. market time. I get him to school. I get, I get back at, we'll say 9.05. Mm -hmm. And then I lock in from 9.05 .05 until, let's see, it'd be 9.30 for me, or excuse me, 1030 for me. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, I'll do my, you know, hour of trading. Uh, I kind of like that philosophy. Then I study for I like an hour. Um, and then what I'm kind of like how Vic was saying in uh, a couple podcasts ago, and I know he mentioned it in the room a long time ago too, when he first became a moderator, 
I listen to the podcast as I drive because I do a lot of driving. Mm -hmm. um, so I listen Love to uh, the videos and, you know, kind of similar what he did. I was like, well, that's a good idea. Instead of listening to music, listen to something that's going to help me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I do it. Uh, I don't feel pressure, though, because, like well, I said, it's this is, this is play money. Um, yeah. And what I mean by play money, it's like it's not money that has to go into my pocket to feed my family. Yeah, of yeah, course. Um, exactly. I, that's uh, smart man I, that's really smart yeah i look at it as just i keep the money in the account it stays in there i pull out money every every month at the end of every month i made a a promise to myself and god i was like hey at the end of every month i'm gonna pull out my tithe from you know my trading account and then that's it um and then when we're planning on going on vacation then i'll pull money out so we can go on vacation we don't have to impact our day to day and yeah. it's easy i mean it's, it's easy for me because i don't like i said i don't have a a full-time job anymore. Um, the pressure's not there for me. Even if I didn't trade at all, we would be able to to sustain our, our life, our livelihood. And the kids are in school. And even when they're not, they kind of let me be for the first hour of the day. And then that's when it's difficult, like over the summer or when they're on breaks, because I don't want to sit and watch videos and study because I want to spend time with the kids. Yeah. But they're, yeah. they're, they're at that age now where I'm like, hey, guys, I need an hour. Just give me one hour. You know, early afternoon, or I'll do it after they go to bed, and I'll yeah. stay up a little bit later. I'll watch an hour or two of videos. I'll review my trades for the day, and then prep for the next day. Yeah, and I think that's great. And that's a lot more disciplined than a lot of people are putting in. That's the thing, is that, like, sure. for, for someone like you, like, just even listening to me, like, uh, uh, like, listening, me listening to you talk is what I was trying to say. Like, I was like, wow, that's like a a great amount of work, you know, to be putting in every single day. Whereas most people are like, for them, it's like a choice. Like they're like, ah, do I want to put this in today? Do I want to do this today? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? You know, as far as you, you've ingrained it and made it a part of your routine and your habits. So now it's not as much as a choice for you where it's some, something that you need to do each day. You know, it's something that is ingrained in you to do each day. And that's what I think is so great. Whereas a lot of people are like, do I want to watch Netflix or do I want to work on trading? And then a lot of people pick the Netflix and then it compounds and compounds and compounds. And then a lot of my trading calls, I'm like, man, you, you really got to pay attention to those videos. You got to start watching the videos. You got to really treat it like it's, you know, university or whatever. You know, if you were doing a course right now on, you know, uh, I don't know anything you know this is how you would have to approach it right and it is the exact same thing so i really do applaud you uh on that for sure like i said it took me a while so i'll be up front with you guys um even though i've been a member of mic and i watched the videos i watched the accelerated course um before i realized that shorting was kind of fit my lifestyle better harry i watched all your videos yeah. um I was going along. but then i was breaking all the rules um <laughs> so wasn't sticking, sticking to it so now that I've kind of made it that business plan, I stick to those videos. I watch them. I do the notes. I listen to, you know, Bal's Tuesday lives, Alex's Monday lives, Tasha's market sentiment, or no, not Tash. Uh, Austin. I'm little, Austin, now I'm looking like an idiot. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the things. I apologize. <laughs> but, uh, you know, once I started dedicating to that and, and hey, look, like, if it's not if it's not one of these rules that fits my standard, I'm not going to do it. That's when I found that success because if if you know I'm watching a Tom video and Tom says, "Hey, I short like this," then I watch a James video and James is like, "Hey, I short like this." Then I see a Harry video. He's like, "Hey, look, if you're going to launch, you can't do this." Yeah. And then I'm like, "Oh well, that's three different people from three completely different places, both around the world and in their trading. It's got to yeah. be something." Yeah. For yeah, sure. so. I like that. I think that that's probably a good place to end it. Actually, that was that was a really nice kind of ending statement. I feel like. Yeah. So thanks for uh, coming on, bro. Yeah, Jason. No, thank, thank you, guys. You, dude. Thanks. No, that that was awesome.